Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is October 25th of 2021. This is going to be a uh, very fast video. I, I wanted to cover uh, two or three subjects, I think, but I'm going to cover them very, very quickly. Nothing earth shaking, uh, you know. Uh, I've been uh, talking with some, you know, family and friends about this shooting for the movie Rust. Rust. Uh, well, the police, you know, have. I'm sure the. Well, they're probably still doing some investigative work, but the police, you know, have investigated it. Uh, that you know that type of accident. If you're not familiar with it, uh, a movie is being made, Rust, and it has Alex Baldwin as the star. And uh, I guess they were, he was getting ready for uh, a scene, and he was practicing his draw. He was going to. He was showing the, uh, they had handed him, a uh, director or somebody handed him the weapon, a revolver. And uh, so he was practicing. When they, uh, I think they say, what, cold weapon or something? The, it's, they, have, they have procedures because things like this have happened, you know, before if you... <laughs> Uh, stuff that sh some stuff that positively should not you know should not happen happens for un multiple reasons and it, anyway <clears throat> uh, he was showing the you know this is the way I'm going to draw so they could you know get the camera lined up and all that type of stuff and pulled out the gun it went off and uh shot a uh, female, I forget her exact title, killed her, and then uh, a director of some sort, he wasn't the director, but one of the, you know, he was shot, I think, in the shoulder. I think he, he went to the hospital, of course, but uh, he, uh, I think he was back the next day, you know, back the next day or whatever. Uh, if you see this, this is the where it happened, you know, out away from. Uh, by the way, Alec Baldwin is worth sixty million dollars. This is the uh, female, and I forget her exact title. Uh, okay, cinema cinematographer. Uh, Anyway, uh, there are very strict procedures, I guess, that they have set up for, for things like this. And they're supposed to have, you know, people in armor or I'm not sure exactly what the title would be, you know, would be and, for, and who's the most responsible person. I don't know how that, you know, how that works. But the weapons, whatever they are, are to be secure. People are not to play with them. They're not to, you know, nobody's to, to bring uh, ammunition into the movie set area. That I mean, there are strict rules, but things happen from time to time. And one reason is because men fucking love guns. And uh, see that thing I showed you, the... Uh, Okay, well, here it is. I know men. I've worked with them. Um, they love guns. And looking at that, oh my God, you know. We could shoot some guns there. We could go at night. Now, this didn't happen at night, but I don't know what kind of security and, you know, 
the guys that are going to be there, you know, there's going to be guys that are working there and there'll be pretty women or something. And the guy or something, if he has access or, you know, to the woman, he can say, you know, hey, we should shoot. Have you ever shot a gun? No, I'd like to shoot a gun. Well, we can do it. I got access. I got a key to get in. I know where to keep the guns or, you know, whatever is, you know, happened. Wherever the things broke down. <laughs> Men and their love of guns. And hey, I grew, I'm 80 years old. When I grew up, we played guns all the time. Not with real guns, but we played guns all the time. You know, we played cowboys and Indians and we played, played uh, the military, you know, the cavalry and... Uh, I had all those little, we all had all those little tiny soldiers that were like rubber or whatever. In Missouri we had, had a lot of red clay. Where I lived we had a lot of red clay and around the 4th of July, you know, I would go out there and dig, put my different kinds of soldiers, you know, little tiny things there and then I would throw firecrackers, you know, lady fingers at, at them, that kind of stuff. It was just in the wintertime we through snowballs, everything was, you know, guns and not real guns, but, and we grew up that way, and <laughs> an awful lot of us, believe me, uh, let's see, the first hospital security job I worked at, uh, we had two security officers shot there in the line of duty, you know, shot by bad guys. I don't remember uh, an accidental discharge or anything like that. The second hospital, just before I went over there to, and went to work, uh, they had a guy who was uh, a security officer who was up in the office, uh, security office, and was going to have to go to the range to do his yearly qualifications or whatever, and he was dry firing the revolver and he shot a hole right, you know into into the wall of the security office uh, trying to think if there was okay I can't, I can't remember it was, was that a uh, um, okay yeah that was Let's see first hospital second okay during the Republican convention, well, we had one of the security officers. I mean, we could, uh, you know, clean our weapons and check our ammo and do all that kind. You know, you know, we could do that. But you know, we had uh, a guy who just loved his gun more than you know, more than he just. There was he was always you know when he'd come into the security and he would. You know, he'd check his ammo, you know. I mean, I don't know where it was a revolver with six rounds in it. I don't know where he thought those, you know, he could replace the ammo. If, if you, you know, you should replace it occasionally. Anyway, and I just thought, oh my God, you know. I think I told him a few times, you know. Keep the gun in the holster, you know. And during the Republican convention, we went to 12-hour shifts and no days off during for the two weeks of the Republican convention time. And we were on 12-hour shifts. And I came into work, the director of security said, uh, I forget what the security officer's name was. He says, oh, he accidentally dropped his gun and uh, it went off. And nobody was hurt or anything like that. Uh, and I said, no, he didn't drop his gun. He was playing with it or showing it to somebody, something like that. And the director of security, no, no, no. He, he told me that he dropped it. And I said, I don't care what he told you. He was playing with it or showing it to somebody. Somebody like, that's what happened. The director of security said, well, I just, I just wrote up a policy that uh, uh, in, the revol in our revolvers, uh, we have to keep the chamber underneath the hammer uh, empty, so we'll only have five rounds in our, you know, revolvers. And I said, I'm keeping six. And he says, well, I just wrote this policy that we have to do. And I said, 
I don't care. I'm keeping six in it. You can fire me. You can, you know, whatever you want to do. I'm not doing that. I'm going to have six rounds. By the way, I'm, I mean, the revolver, the weapon, the revolver and that type of stuff, I mean, that's your tools of work, you know, of whatever. But I just, and the director of security didn't, you know, didn't fire me. Uh, several years later, I ended up working with the security officer who had dropped his, uh, you know, dropped his uh, weapon, and he he told me he says I didn't ask or anything. He just we were just talking, and he said, "Jim, you remember?" And I said, "Yeah." And I told him, you know, I told him what the director of security said and everything. And I, you know, he said, "Yeah, you were right." I was showing it to a respiratory therapy person, you know, in the hall or in the stairway or whatever, and accidentally the gun went off. Um, at that time, I was also on reserve, a reserve police department for a small town, and for years we did all they had were reserve police officers, uh, and then they got the uh, chief of police uh, became the you know was, was a paid he did Monday through Friday you know at work he was a retired Kansas City Missouri police officer. Real nice guy. Uh, and then finally we got in, well, first we got in like a dispatcher. You know, we got dispatchers first. And then we got in a police officer for the that was hired for the, and I was offered the job, but I turned it down. I did, you know, I was offered it repeatedly when an opening became available. Finally, I, I couldn't afford to take the job. It didn't pay enough. Um, and so we had an, an a full-time officer on the night shift. Uh, I came in to do my, uh, it was up to me, I mean, it was up to the reserve of, you know, we, basically, I, I, for years, I patrolled, I think it was every Sunday night, and I could come in, I could come in whenever I wanted to. I'd come in about 7 p.m. or whatever, and I would patrol, before we had an officer on the midnight shift, I would patrol till 2 or 3, you know, in the morning, depending on circumstances. But when we got a full-time officer on the midnight shift, then when I would come in, I would stay even longer because I didn't want to leave an officer like that, even though the reserve officers were working by themselves. Uh, I didn't want to leave an officer there, uh, you know, so I would stay as long as I could. And, uh, but that first officer we had, I, I came in to, uh, for my night to patrol, and he told me, he says, to see the hole over there? He says, I was messing with my gun and it went off. <laughs> the, the, I think you may have seen this room a little bit, you know. The chief of police had an office that was like half this size, or I mean, it was just room enough for a a desk and maybe a filing cabinet or something, very small area. And the officer accidentally discharged his firearm and the bullet went through, you know, through the wall and into the chief's office. And I, I'm i sure if the chief had been there, he'd have been hit by the, you know, there wasn't that much room in there. He'd have been hit for sure. Um, now at that hospital on the line of duty, we had to uh, no, wait a minute, that's the second hospital, yeah. Um, so then that, that hospital, no, that wasn't the hospital that started taking over the other hospitals. Anyway, I got sidetracked longer talking. Uh, this situation, you know, here, making this movie, when I look at it and see, man, you know, it looks like it was, I mean, I, I guess they built it. The thing that's a church, I guess, out there in the wilderness. There's guys who would be working there who would say, oh, let's practice, you know, let's, uh, let's, man, let's shoot some, shoot some guns here. And they've got, you know, the, the movie group, you know, they have X number of 
firearms. I don't know in movie making, like when you see the, I love movies, I think we all love movies. I'm not sure how many times that they really fire actual ammunition other than blanks, you know. But there may be time, well, like we know for the uh, tragic helicopter pyrotechnics when they were doing that and it killed Vic Merle, or what's his name? Uh, and the two little kids, you know, the helicopter came, you know, explosion went off and brought the helicopter down and killed three people, two of them kids. Um, so I'm not sure, but I can see, I think, you know, more information will come out of it. There'd be men who couldn't, couldn't resist having their picture and actually shooting a gun, you know, there in front of that old church. And uh, there, there would be guys, you know, working that set or whatever, who would be telling some cute, you know, actress or uh, it, just somebody that fills another, any position, you know, telling her, you know, hey, have you ever shot a gun? Would you like to shoot a gun? Well. You know, if this person had access or something, you know, uh, well, come, well, I'll pick you up and bring you down, and you know, we, I'll show you how to shoot a gun, and and then you know, the gun is loaded, and the people working, you know, they they don't know the gun is loaded when they come into work, and they don't do, you know, the. It sounds like too they were trying to cut back on money. It sounded like they sent, you know, I mean, I don't think there's any criminality involved. Uh, it's just tragic that, you know, a, you know, the woman was killed. She, I think, her, I think her son is nine years old. I think in the beginning they said she had a daughter, but it, was a, it just turns out it's a son. I just saw his picture, it's not the father and the, I think, I think the, saw the father, mother, and anyway, I could tell you Okay, yeah, that was the third, the third on the third hospital that I worked at. They eventually went from one. They built a hospital, and that was in my hometown. And I went. I got to work there for nine years. That was great. I was. I could walk to work if I wanted to. You know, it was like two blocks away or something. That was great. But. Um, We that hospital looks like this is going to be a longer video than I thought. Uh, that hospital uh, started taking over, buying up before long. I think they owned like 15, 14 or 15 hospitals. They took them over. Uh, but when they when they took over. Uh, one hospital, Baptist Hospital, uh, and you know their security. You know they took that over. Uh, one of the security officers there, a uh, real nice guy, very sharp, everything. He had gone for training, uh, you know, out of. Well, I'm sure he got local training, but he also went on his. I think on his own, he paid for, to go to. Uh, one of these uh, places where they train police officers and where you can get some in-depth on firearms and that type of stuff. And he got certified, I think, uh, as an instructor by, I believe, uh, NRA, you know, training. And then he got some other training on, uh, you know, being an instructor and that type of stuff. So for the, as we took these hospitals over, this... Uh, security officer over there became our range officer, not just for, um, not just for the hospital that he worked at, but for the, all, ever the, all the hospitals. And uh, he did a great job, but he had uh, a, an accident on when he was working, nobody was hurt. And it was an accident that shouldn't have happened, but it, ju it just, you know, things happened. 
he was working with a uh, other, you know, there was, I think, maybe three security officers all together on the ship or something like that. And one of the officers, because he would, uh, he would be our, he was a range officer for all of as they took over, you know. Um, but another officer who was working at, you know, at Baptist, uh, had a question about his firearm that this officer was carrying or some, it had something to do with that. And so the range officer, who they were all work, they were working a regular shift. You know, the, the range officer just worked his regular shift and occasionally he would be, you know, paid extra for, uh, and then go, you know. But anyway, the officer working with him had some kind of a question. I can't remember what it was. But the, and so the officer handed the range officer his gun and the thing went off. <laughs> uh, and I got to admire the, the range officer when he was telling us all later, you know, and, you know, he used that as a, you know, a, he said, I made a mistake. It was a stupid mistake on my part. We need to be careful when we're doing such and such and so. Um, anyway, I'm, I don't know what you, you know, I don't know what you do. You have to hire, you know, you have to. I've never, I never had an accidental discharge with my weapon. I, uh, modern, you know, revolvers, that's one way I knew that the officer at Trinity Lutheran Hospital, you know, lied when he said he dropped in and went off. There, uh, there's a blocking thing that comes up. So if you drop the revolver, you know, and it hits, you know, the uh, on the hammer or something or other, you know, it should not go off. I mean, is there some way that some bizarre thing could happen? Maybe, but. I knew the officer, you know, who had the accidental discharge or whatever, and I knew he couldn't keep his hands off his probably his penis and couldn't keep his hands off his off the, off of his weapon, you know. So um, anyway, I hope that it's well. No matter what happened, you know, the lady. A, a woman was, she had some position in this thing and she's been interviewed and uh, on another movie she had been, she'd been trained, uh, you know, a little bit and on that other movie she was the, I'm not sure what the classification with the thing would be, but she was like in charge of and she was, not, they have several, you know, uh, positions and on this movie she was told they wanted her, they wanted her as whatever the classification is for, you know, and she admits that she did not feel comfortable. She didn't feel like she had enough training and whatever, but she went ahead and took, you know, took the job. I don't think she did anything wrong except, you know, she shouldn't have taken the job and, uh, but it sounds like there's a, uh, because I just read this story. Sounds like there was a guy, and I forget what his position was in the thing, but he was in the uh, chain of, you know, and and there were, were complaints about him, complaints on other movies that he uh, was not doing the things that he should be doing to properly do the job that he was supposed to be doing and on this on this movie apparently not doing the uh, safety training that should be done and all types of stuff I'm wondering you know where the live am, am or whatever it was well it was, I'm wondering where did it come from did somebody bring it in you know or, or was this stuff left unsecure 
and did somebody but did somebody bring it some ammo in on their own uh, yeah I don't want to go I'm going on and on about it it's, it's upsetting it, that stuff should not happen Extreme weather is coming to the United States. Okay. Um, I use this for my nose, by the way. I always hate it when... Uh, oh, I remembered to turn off the uh, fish aquarium pump, water pump, so it ought to be a little bit quieter. Um... Oh, I wanted to mention this. I just turned my uh, okay. You can't see. Okay, there it's coming. Okay, there it's coming in view. On my cell phone, this is the same one I think. Like this, I just turned my cell phone on, and then I, you know, did my finger swipe to see what the latest news was or something. This says, fourth stimulus check update. See if your state is issuing in a, in a, uh, a week or so ago. I saw this very same thing. Um, and I, my thought was, okay, there's not going to be any stimulus check, you know, another stimulus check. But, um, Um, I wanted to see if what I thought was some site <clears throat> were using that, you know, uh, to get people to, you know, go to it by, you know, making people think, hey, you know, retired old people, well, I'm old, but uh, making them go to their site to see to think, oh, there's going to be more money coming, you know. Um, and so I, I clicked on it, thinking that's what it was, and what I was going to do, a, a little video, and say, beware, you know, these people are trying to make you think there's a stimulus check, and uh, just to get you to go there. But I didn't think that it was... Uh, uh, maybe more more than that so anyway I clicked on it uh, maybe a couple weeks ago and it, it I, I went to the site and I thought okay maybe there I knew I, that I wasn't you know that there wasn't going to be another stimulus check but I thought you know the, the government is uh, has been sending out some money or is going to for people that have uh dependent children. There was there's several things going on, but I knew that I wasn't in my family. None of us were actually qualified. But I wanted to see if it was if they were just trying to get people to go to their site for hits and traffic and all that kind of stuff. So it popped up and I forget it asked like started asking questions. And I I put in my email address, and I thought that was kind of strange. I thought, why does it just show the, you know, but I put in my email address. Then it asked for date of uh, date of birth, and I put that in. I thought, well, okay, they, in order to know how old you are, you know, if this is going to be, I did that. And then I forget if it popped up for social security. It popped up or something, and I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> and I left that, and then I tried to delete it. And I could tell then that uh, it wasn't, you know, like, how could you, do, you know. So I thought I, I went through and checked everything to see where in the world, you know, and deleted a few things. And I see today that it's popped back up. Uh, I hate, I love computers. 
and that kind of stuff. But I also hate computers and the, and the, all of this kind of garbage going on. And it really shouldn't be happening. But it's the world we live in. So I enough on that. Um, you probably heard me talk about this. I'm not sure I even say it. Quotera? Quotera? I'm not sure. People ask questions. People answer questions. I've been reading these things and I start reading it. And before long, I just keep going to the next one, the next, because the next, it looks interesting, you know. And I'll spend several hours doing that. I think, my God, I just wasted, you know. But I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, you know, they ask a question, somebody asks a question, and then people jump in and answer. And I can remember when I first, when they first got me hooked, um, Several people ask a question, but somebody asked a question. Does somebody who's wealthy, really rich, does a rich man, a millionaire, uh, does he, when he goes in to eat someplace or something like that, does he pay the bill or does somebody, does that, you know, is that taken care of? Then there was some answers, you know. And uh, one guy who answered had been for one or two people uh, the you know the guy that took care of things like that, and they mentioned somebody mentioned does anybody really have a gold card or whatever, you know real gold card or whatever, and he said uh, yes that he knew of a case where there were several people who had a real gold card, and he worked for the guy that he worked for had a real gold card, but he said you know. You know, no, you know, I take care of, you know, everything when a person goes out to eat or whatever, things are taken care of. And then there was stuff that I thought found out already, and that's how I first got hooked, and then it just kept going on. And now I'm, I'm hooked. They started something a while back where if you, if you ask a, a good question, or you answer a question and it gets a lot of traffic or whatever, you could earn money. And they told you, I forget how much it was, they've, they've done things before that, you know, these people, you know, earned such and such, you know, they're getting such and such a month by asking or answering questions. But I thought at that point that I would uh, probably no longer be reading these things because I told myself, and then there's a friend of mine that also is big, he, he's in the same position separately, we both separately like discovered this place. And I'm not sure how long we were both like reading it separately. And then uh, he or I said, oh my God, I mean, and the other person says, oh, I am too, taking up so much time doing this. And uh, so then they started where you could be paid for asking a question or for answering a question. And I'm not sure, I guess you have to get thumbs up or something or other by other people who are reading it that, you know. Um, and then recently, and anyway, oh, I, I told myself, okay, this, you're gonna have people now just asking things that are going to get people to want to read it. Uh, what would that be? Yeah, uh, let's see if I can come up with something. Um, were you ever caught uh, in your bedroom or something, or were you ever caught uh, doing something you were embarrassed by, or did somebody ever catch you naked, or, you know, there are going to be questions like that, maybe some other kind of questions like that. And then people are going to answer them, but are they gonna, do they really have, or are they going to, you know, are they, in order to get people to click on that, I thought this is going to be the end of something that was really done well. And uh, then I could see, you know, 
I've been seeing questions that nobody really wants the answer to. They just want to put it uh, in a way that's going to get, you know. So, but then, fairly recently, in the last month or week or two weeks or something or other, and this is the first time, well, yesterday was the first time I've seen this. This is an area, I didn't even know this was created. I just found it, you know. So this is my page. Uh, and if people go to it, Well, you can, yeah, they, it pops up. I started, you know, there'd be uh, interesting, well, somebody took advantage of this thing that they set up uh, where you then end up like with your own, like a WordPress page or something, you know. And uh, then the questions that, that end up being asked here or whatever, in order to read them, you have to pay a membership fee of, I don't know, $10 a month or something like that, whatever it is. Maybe you can make it $50, I don't know. Let's see, this is the administrative page. I guess I'm already at the administrative page. Um, so, and that, that was a turn off because before I could all, and so I've clicked on some things, you know, in the last week or two, whenever they started, and this a thing would pop up. I never actually ended up going to some place like this. But you can create, like, your page. And if people... Uh, let's see, this person here, uh, Johnny Orlando Fandom, has 92 followers. Uh, this person has one follower. This person has nine. Eight posts in the last month. This guy has four posts in a... Oh, let's see. Invite people earnings. Uh, so now I haven't set any of this... I haven't set any of this up. I, you know... But it's available. Now, I have seen, you know, you could take, you know, maybe you want to do a YouTube page, fine, you know. But there is the uh, possibility with this, and you'd be getting in on like the ground floor of, uh, you could have a joke section. You could have a section talking about something specific that people would be interested in. Uh, so there's a possibility. Uh, I'll put the link to this. Well, I'm not sure you go, if you went here, I'll put the link to this. Okay, I, th I think, okay, anybody can come here, I think. Because I haven't turned on the, uh, steps necessary. So this will give you an idea and then you can figure out how, if you want to set up something like this and, you know, think of some way. I'm not sure what the subject would be. Uh, anyway, something that you're really interested in and something that you wanted to share information and that you wanted to keep out. Uh, Other, you know, other people, you wanted to make it a good, you know, a good thing or something. So I'll try to remember to put this link. Let's see, it's home, following, answer, spaces, notifications. Not sure what that is, not sure what that is. Anyway, I'll put the link to, the link to that. Um.
Well, let me just say about this thing, I really, there are some great questions asked and there are some great answers. People answer, you know, um, somebody will ask questions about the, you know, the military, about the pay, about uh, ranks, uh, what if, I mean, about the military, there's a lot of stuff and I've learned an awful lot by reading these, uh, you know, reading the answers and the questions or whatever. I tried to get into the military after I got out of high school. I went to a military high school. And uh, my plan was to go into the military. Then I found out I was 40 pounds under the minimum weight requirement. And then, of course, what I knew, I never thought about was, I had in the first grade, second grade, well, in the first grade, I had a... Uh, ear infection and the doctor made house calls back then and he didn't show up for a few I don't know if he was just it would be busy I mean it'd be hard to go to people's homes and places and maybe he was a drinker I don't know but he showed up and he said oh if I got here a couple of days ago I would have had to lance your ear and I thought thank God you didn't get here yeah in time to lance my I then I in the second grade there was uh, at the school hearing testing done and I had really bad hearing loss in both ears but I totally forgot about that I never had it treated or checked or anything else but that was worse than the weight loss that or the weight that I didn't have um, but that hearing loss would have been I had, there's no way I would have got in with that hearing loss uh, Let's see, it's not showing, but I, uh, it works on a, well, my, the, my problem is the hearing loss is like different in each ear, and then that makes it worse because, uh, and then too, like I've always liked electronics and computers and that kind of stuff, and I remember having the first watches that had a, an alarm on it, I had a, a Cassie, what was it? I don't think it was Cassie. I had a, one of the big watches that had a little, like a gold thing that came out, and you could, it was a calculator, you could push the little tiny keys with it, all that kind of stuff. But then as the Casio watches came out that did stuff, you know, I positively could not hear, even if it was up, you know, I could not hear the alarm. The alarm type things were totally uh, useless. I could not hear them. And, uh, uh, so that would have kept me, you know, and then I'm, but from reading, like from reading the uh, questions here, I found out that so far as the weight being overweight or underweight, uh, when I was, you know, rejected or whatever, there was a time later on where in order to get people for, you know, Vietnam, they waved the, they would take in somebody who was a fat slob, you know, and in the camp, you know, they would, you know, I guess they would tell the guy that was overweight, uh, you're, you, instead of you getting, you know, 20 minutes to eat, you only get 15, you know, whoever was in that group, special squad or platoon or whatever it was, you know, instead of having whatever the military says, you know, in basic training, instead of having 20 minutes to eat all of your food, you know, you would have uh, 15 minutes to eat. If you were underweight, you know, you'd be allowed a more time, maybe five minutes or, you know, uh, extra, and uh, you'd be allowed to have a piece of pie or something, you know, something like that. And apparently that worked and they used that for a while. Then I guess when they didn't need people for Vietnam, you know. But so there was, and then also I learned from this uh, thing about, they talked about Donald Trump. See, I got a uh, one Y card. And so 
all my life I thought to myself, you know, well, at least, you know, I wasn't 4F. And then I, uh, when I was reading about when Donald Trump was running for office and stuff, they talked about his uh, going to a military high school like I did, except he went to an expensive, you know, an expensive one. And uh, he told the news media that, you know, he he knew because of that, he because he went to a military high school, he knew more about the military than the people. This is before he went, and he got elected, you know. I would think that no, nobody in the military would have voted for him, you know. He said he knew more about the military than the men who were serving in, you know, the military. Uh, because he went to a military high school, ROTC high school. And I thought, oh my God. But, uh, uh, what I did not know was also, well, oh yeah. Then they said uh, that, you know, he got these deferments for education. Then he got a def he got deferments for bone spur in his foot. And, uh, and then he got a one Y card, and then I thought, oh, he had the same, same card that I had. And then they said, all oh, the people who had one Y cards, at such and such a date, you know, many many years later, those people all had a four F card sent. You know, they were their classification was changed to four F. And uh, I thought, oh no. I really was 4F. Of course, I was 4F because of the hearing loss, for sure. I mentioned that uh, I just totally forgot about the the hearing loss all my life. I just ignored it, you know. But if I had been able to get into the military, you know, if the weight had not been the problem, I would have gone into the military. I did not know, and by reading these uh, military people talking, you know, I did not know that with the recruiter that it was like a contract. You made a contract, you know, the recruiter would say, oh, okay, well, we, you know, it'd be something, maybe some good, you know, a good job, <laughs> or it'd be a bad job, and you could, you know, you could work out a deal, and I didn't realize it that uh, you could like pick and choose because when I went when it to the recruiter's office to enlist, uh, the recruiter said, "Well, we need teletype repair people," and I, you know, like I wanted to be in like the hundred and first airborne or something like that, which would not have been good for me. You know, I would have, I'd have broke something right away. I mean, you know, a leg or, I don't, but I, that's what I wanted, you know. But I didn't know you could get a, uh, well, I did know about the contract thing where you could go in with buddies and they would try to keep you together if they could. But I didn't know it was really like a contract type of thing. And so I could have ended up repairing teletype machines. And I'm sure I, they would well if I stay. I wanted to, to go in for 20 years and stay for 20 years, but I I really enjoyed the, the questions that are asked about everything. Well, not about everything, but and then the uh, you know the answers of people who really know the situation. Uh, what was it the other day? Well, just every time I there's just. I gotta actually stop looking at this. It just takes uh, takes up too much of my time, and I have other. I I uninstalled from my computer uh, Civilization Six. I was spending, you know, several hours sometimes playing that, and I need to be doing other, you know, other things. And. Uh, uh, I guess I better stop this. What was to be very short, which I was thinking it was going to be 10 or 15 minutes. Did I cover everything? Oh, let's say I did. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.